Hello everyone, I'm Andrew Reed, Juris Doctor, Small Business Development, IT and Marketing Guru from sunny Victoria, BC. Follow me for new podcasts on beginner investing in business as I survive, grow and prosper in a post-COVID Canada. Disclaimer, my podcast and YouTube content offer very generalized information that has been beneficial to me. Always do your homework and due diligence and make sure that any moves you make are in your own best interest. Nothing in my content is any kind of advice and continuing to listen constitutes acceptance of this disclaimer in its entirety. Hello and welcome to the fourth installment of 100 Wealth Hacks that I personally use. Here in part four, we have numbers 31 through 40. Number 31, affirmations, reprogramming the mind. Okay, these are especially useful if you are deeply programmed into a poverty mindset, as I personally used to be. So I listen to prosperity affirmations for at least a few hours every day, often all night, and then into the morning. Um, The people who make these affirmations that I listen to say 21 days minimum. Um, And I've been doing these affirmations since a few weeks before my very first investments, not too long ago, relatively. I've often done affirmations in my life, but this is the first time that I've done them for money and personal finance and investments. I generally will play them while I sleep, while I walk and through the morning um, or, you know, if I'm working remotely or doing chores, I'll just play them in the background and I will actively repeat them in my head, occasionally say them out loud. you must actively embrace them for maximum effectiveness, and this gets um, this gets easier over time. It gets more more ingrained, right? When you first start doing it, you might even find your mind and body resisting it and saying, "No, this isn't me. I'm not meant to be wealthy and prosperous." And you'll literally you'll feel that uh, pushback, um, or at least I did. Uh, but over time. You know, it's smoothed out. It becomes part of your actual programming. So you can find affirmations on YouTube. You could um, just search for prosperity affirmations, and they're completely free. It's hard to go wrong here. Any kind of prosperity affirmations are going to be pretty good. Um, One tip, uh, gratitude affirmations go hand-in-hand with with the regular I am affirmations. Gratitude itself is key. Um... Gratitude will attract opportunity and prosperity. It's a beautiful cycle. Remember that the subconscious mind doesn't recognize past or future statements. So you can't say, I will be prosperous. Or it just your subconscious mind is present focused. It doesn't understand negative statements either. You can't say, I will eliminate my toxic debt, right? Better to say, I am debt-free, and gaining positive net worth. Um, You can write and repeat your own affirmations custom to you, and you can use those on their own or in conjunction with with the YouTube or other affirmations that you find. Number 32, manage and protect your social media. Uh, We're talking long-term game here. So no matter where you are in life, this is necessary. Protect yourself now so that you can uh, preserve your social media for future opportunities. Okay, so when you're out there networking, making contacts, searching for employment, they will be checking out your social media, right? You're going for job promotions even, new job interviews, a million reasons why you shouldn't have anything divisive, polarizing, or offensive, etc., on your social media pages whatsoever. So do you know what's showing on your Facebook, Instagram? If the answer is no, this has got to make the top of your to-do list. Go through and delete anything that meets those criteria, You know, whether it's divisive or polarizing or offensive, delete it. 
it's not doing you any benefit to have that stuff on there, right? Whatever reason you're giving right now for not doing this, like free speech and well, I'm a person and an individual, it's not worth it, right? Wealth will bring actual freedom. Until then, you are a financial slave. You have to work to pay the bills. Um, so there's no such thing as freedom for you if you're in that state, unless you consider homelessness freedom. Uh, so go remove some speed bumps from your pathway by auditing your social media to these standards. Here's another tip. Don't trust anybody you haven't met in person and rarely then either, right? Make your passwords difficult. Listen to Wealth, Wealth Hacks 21 through 30 for tips on managing passwords. Protect your social media. Number 33, use gas station point cards. I'm dead serious. I, uh, at the time of writing this, I just got $10 off my full tank at the local Shell gas station because I had earned 95 air miles. Now, don't ask me exactly how the air miles system works, but every month or two, and I drive very infrequently, I seem to get a discount of around $10 from my air miles. So that's $120 a year. Um, I carry a gas station card or an app for the three gas stations that I might go to. Um, so these points add up. I know it's a little bit of a pain, but really you get in the habit of it. You'll flash it every time or you'll run it through the, the gas station pump itself and you will save a considerable amount of money, a considerable amount of money, and all that money adds up, as you know. Wealth hack 34, be nice to solicitors. Give them nothing, but be kind, right? These people are hustlers and it's a small world. You might want to hire them as employees for your company one day. Tell them honestly as soon as possible that you have nothing to spare at this time, right? They will hopefully understand and appreciate your upfront dealing while at least acknowledging that they're human and hustlers at two, right? So you're acknowledging that they're a human being just trying to hustle. Um, repeat a second time if you have to, right? I don't have anything to spare right now. I'm really sorry, but I wish you the best, right? Repeat that if you have to. After that, withdraw from the conversation. Your time is valuable. Um, you don't want to pander to them. You just want to treat them with a bit of respect. Uh, this goes for the individual person that may be uh, requesting sponsorship for that next $20 pack of cigarettes. Don't invest your hard-earned money on that with maybe some exceptions. Okay, me, for example, I'll carry a small emergency change fund while I'm in my car or biking or walking. And if I see a situation involving someone in a vulnerable demographic or situation, I will give them a small amount from that fund. Um, so on that note, the topic is worthy of its own podcast episode one of these days, right? A survival guide for the newly homeless in Canada. So that's going to be in the works when I get through all these 100 wealth hacks. Um, and just basically what I would do to get out of that situation as quickly as possible and to even use it to prosper, right? It's, it's always possible as long as you have the right knowledge and mindset and and plan, strategic plan, right? To be able to adapt and pivot even in a situation like that. And this topic will be especially relevant with the looming housing crisis caused by our wonderful Canadian government, but I digress too much. Number 35, micro certifications, all the rage. Add to your value by getting micro certifications from colleges, nonprofits, wherever you can get one. Uh, for myself, this past year, I've acquired a digital marketing bootcamp certification from Alacrity Canada, which was free with a, by applying. And I have four other micro certifications for nonprofit management and fundraising and grant writing from nonprofitready.org, all of these for free. And uh, looking back, I should have worked to get even more, right? Get as many micro certification as you can. They will just look great on your resume and add to your value. Number 36, eat out of the pot and other extreme kitchen related penny pinchers. Okay, 
these will have to be specific to you and your diet. But for me, yeah, if I'm home alone and um, I will eat Annie's mac and cheese plus a can of skipjack tuna right out of the pot, it's another extreme pitch, right? It's one less dish that I have to wash and put through the dishwasher, which costs money. So it extends that dishwashing cycle. And when you use the dishwasher or any major appliance, you can watch if you're tracking your electricity usage, you can watch that day spike, right? So pushing that off for another day and extending that cycle, you can save a little bit, right? And it's all about saving a bit. Another extreme uh, kitchen pinch of mine, uh, this recipe, ramen noodles with lemon pepper spice. I strain it, then add two drips of low sodium soy sauce and I uh, get the ramens for 20 cents at Dollarama. Um, so I can still create an entire filling meal with a reasonable amount of protein and carbs and low, relatively low fat for 40 cents. And this is in Canada in 2022. I can create a meal for 40 cents with that recipe um, that has a reasonable level of nutrition. So find your own that work for you, but have a few extreme kitchen-related penny pinchers in your arsenal. Number 37, focus. Be self-aware. Mistakes are costly. Reduce them by being aware of yourself and your environment. Reducing your dangers, minimizing unnecessary risks. If you're doing a task that involves risk, do not add to that risk by multitasking and thereby being distracted. This doesn't mean that all multitasking is bad, by the way. I've heard some spiritual gurus preach this, but I disagree. They say don't multitask. There are some times where it's more efficient to multitask, so go for it. Just stick to risk calculated multitasking, right? Choose the times that you multitask where you're not risking a costly mistake by doing so. Number 38, and this one hits close to home. Don't over haggle your service techs. This might seem counterintuitive. Andrew, I thought you were about saving money. Shouldn't we try to pinch every penny we can with those guys too? Okay, but if you do that, you take away their incentive to do their best job for you, and then you could end up with something less. And when it's a service tech working on something critical to you, that could cost you money down the road through additional repairs or shorter lifespan of whatever the tech is working on. So pay what they ask. You know, you hired them, you should have shopped around first, but you made an agreement. So pay what they ask and even consider tipping them a bit. This could pay off well in the long run because then that tech might be uh, more willing to provide uncontracted support, right? So you might be able to send them a text if something goes wrong in the future. And they're like, okay, the guy gave me a tip. Um, I'm going to respond and just help them out a bit, right? They might even give you a higher priority the next time you need the service, right? So they have two customers um, hoping for the same time slot, right? But you gave them a tip last time and you didn't argue the price. So you could get the service and getting whatever you need fixed sooner, uh, maybe that much more valuable to you, right? So consider it an investment to not over haggle your service techs. Okay, number 39. This one is a bit extreme as well. A couple of these are, but that's okay. Use them if you can. If you really want to save money at the grocery store, don't grab a buggy or a basket, right? Or at least downsize. You're going to go in with a buggy go in with a basket, going to go in with a basket, don't have any basket at all. That way, you can only buy what you can fit into that smaller container. So having worked as a grocery store manager, we would strategically place uh, empty baskets um, for your convenience as you walk through the grocery store, right? So you're coming through and then right by that sale, there'd be a basket and you weren't going to buy that thing, but you know, and you can't really carry it with what you have. Oh, but here's a basket. So now you can, right? And now we've increased your basket size and you're paying more money uh, leaving that grocery store. So keep that in mind, right? Um, if you limit yourself to what you came in to buy and even reduce that a little bit, 
and you can save a ton of money. And this is a good time to start saving money at the grocery store. As you know, inflation has made these prices ridiculous. Um, one other tip with that, only bring a single reusable bag, right? Or limit yourself to how many reusable bags you bring. That can help constrict your, your purchase level too. Um, so if you're walking to the grocery store with a single reusable bag, you know, if that's, you know, if that's viable for you, then, um, it will cause you to really value what you choose to buy and bring home. Right. So then you might even eat a little bit less or portion out a little bit more. And it's sad that we have to do this in this day and age, but such is the cost of inflation, right? If you have a family to feed, this tip won't really work for you, but alternatively shop in advance so that you won't be pulled in by promotions and end caps and flash sales, things like that. Um, Watch out for electronic versions of those, but those are a little bit easier to resist. So you can do this by using online shopping, right? You don't have to have it delivered and pay that delivery fee. You can pick it up usually. And if you pick it up, you generally won't have a fee. They'll shop for you. You can be very specific. And a lot of people are concerned, oh, what if uh, they pick out the thing I wouldn't like, like with produce? Well, you don't have to pay for it in that case, right? You can just send them a quick email and say, hey, this, you know, these bananas were bruised. What, what were you thinking, guys? Um, and they will uh, usually just credit you that that cost, right? It costs the grocery store almost nothing to uh, to credit you for those kind of things. Uh, just something to consider. It's and you can be specific in your request. So if you really want the best fruit, you can make a note while you're online shopping at most of these stores and say, "Hey, please be careful." Um, I, for one, am very picky about those kind of things, but. If you put the instructions in there, then you're pretty well protected. Uh, final one for this podcast, number 40, monitor your paychecks for those of us uh, receiving paychecks. Independently track your hours and make sure you are getting credited accordingly. So I had an employee find an error uh, by tracking his, his paychecks and hours, right? And this went back for six months. And due to an accounting error, um, this tracking that he did led him to recover eight hours of lost pay. So he tracked his hours with a spreadsheet and he noticed the discrepancy over time. Uh, even the most well-meaning employers can potentially short you. So it's just prudent to keep track yourself. Protect yourself at all times. So concludes uh, part four of this series, Wealth Hacks I Personally Use, numbers 31 through 40. Stay tuned for the next series of Wealth Hacks, part five. Um, should be podcast within one week from now. Uh, best of luck out there in this tumultuous market. Happy saving and happy investing. you would like to share with us before you go. Get the latest real-time updates from my Instagram at Canada Stock Market. At Canada Stock Market. Hi there. If you are interested in making a podcast of your own, let me tell you how I did it. I used a program called Anchor. It's the easiest way to make a podcast. It's free. There are creation tools that allow you to record and edit your podcast right from your phone or computer. Anchor will distribute your podcast for you so it can be heard on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and many more. You can make money from your podcast with no minimum listenership. It's everything you need to make a podcast in one place. Download the free Anchor app or go to anchor.fm. To get started. Check out my entire catalog of podcasts completely free at anchor.fm slash Canada Stock Market. Anchor.fm slash Canada Stock Market. <laughs>